Hi, Vaughn Jr. Hello, Larry Chen. How are you? Dude, I'm in Johnson Valley. I couldn't be better. What's up, guys? Welcome to Hoonigan Autofocus. Last time we caught up with Vaughn, we actually had a chance to drive the RTRX. What a blast. That was so much fun. Yeah, you, uh, I, I haven't met, I don't think, I, I don't even know how many people I've let. I let Cletus drive it, I let you drive it. I can count the people that have been behind the wheel, but on five, five fingers, so. But it was just such a nice day and I wanted you to have a good time. And then after seeing your smile after, it was so, so worth it. went to Chelsea's drift school and he yeah. can, he drives sideways like no other now. Well, I'll tell you what, I have to hand it to you. Um, after driving the RTRX and trying to push it, you know, with my limited skill, I have to hand it to you. I can't believe the, you wheel it the way you do. Oh. It is like really hard to drive. Yeah, it, uh, well, when you drove it, it had really soft springs on it. Um, and we've changed that now, but yeah, it's, it, it requires full commitment to do, you know, to drift that track, especially that circuit that you were on Seneca. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a 69 Mustang, you know, it does have some good suspension, but it was not fully sorted when you drove it, so. Well, okay, so we're at King of the Hammers. We'll stop talking about drift cars, even though we're like drift, we love drift, drift boys, cars. you know? <laughs> um, but the, the, the history for me with King of the Hammers and your history is, so hilarious. It's interesting in that this is my 10th year following this race, right? Wow. But the first time I remember you came to the lake bed, I got a text from Vaughn saying, hey, uh, can we stay at your Airbnb? We, we just came to King & Hammers to check it out. And um, I, I said, yeah, but unfortunately our heater was out. And so it was like freezing cold. So yep. I was like, you better find somewhere else to stay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somewhere else to stay. But it's funny because it was such a new thing to you and you accelerated so quick um, to the point where you borrowed a race truck, right? For for the next year after you came to check it out. Oh, so the, yes. No, no, so, sorry. Yes, I got, Nitto offered me, uh, I, I had opportunity to do a ride in a spec truck. So I showed up on the lake bed um, and had never even put a truck in four low before. And uh, it was an incredible experience. I mean, to cut it, to, to be real short with it, I show up at the lake bed, they're like, here's your truck. Next thing you know, I'm in my truck with Lauren Healy in the passenger seat, and he's taking me over to this waterfall, and we get to this thing, and it's like 90 degrees up, and he's like, drive up that. I'm like, like, whatever, like, this is what you do to all the, this is a joke, right? Like, where are we really doing? He's like, no, go up that. He's like, put it in four low, and I'm like, how do you do that? So we put it in four low, and this thing just crawls right up this gnarly hill, and I'm like, ah, that's what this is. So a little bit of training in a couple of days and then raced hammers my first time and uh, finished in the top 10. Yeah, you did really well. It was the uh, Everyman Challenge, right? It was uh, Legends, 4800. Oh, Legends. Okay, yep. so 4800, um, we were there following you. It was so much fun to kind of see uh, somebody from our world, I guess, yeah. race this, you know, because it was really early on in, in even King of the Hammers history, I feel like it wasn't as big and grand as it is now. Yeah. I mean, now we're out here for 12 days. Yeah. You know, because there's just so much to cover, so many things to follow. And it's gotten more serious, obviously. Like that was just a fun thing. And now for me, it's five years later and it's just progressed. You know, immediately after that race, I built Brocky and then was racing 4,500, got uh, kicked out of that class and then moved to 4,400. And this is my third year uh, racing 4,400. Um, which is a, uh, yeah, it's it's insanity, but it's one of those things, you know, I came, come from motocross. And so jumping into this, I don't wanna say it's a natural fit because I've never run canyons and rocks like that on a dirt bike, but um, the, the skill set for motocross and drifting is like the most perfect recipe for this because this is a lot of just weight management, right? Which is what any racing is. You're just managing weight and getting it through whatever you need to get it through. but the throttle control from drift is like the ultimate because the amount, the way that I've been able to learn to feel grip while we're sideways and keep the car, you know, accelerating is very relevant to when you're on the rocks and the momentum and not just blowing the tires off it. So, um, and it's so fun and epic just being out in this, this beauty. But the spatial awareness too, like for example, with drifting, you're able to put your bumper, yeah. you know, this far or this far or, 
touch, yeah. you know? Yeah, and tire placement and vehicle placement here, like you're saying, is is everything. So no, that's a very good good perspective. All right, but so now you have a new body on it. Yep. This is the Bronco. So yeah, this is so this is Brocky. Um, you know, has been running the classic Bronco body for a long time. Um, you know, obviously uh, it was it was amazing, but now it's got a, a new look. Um, so we worked with uh, Lindsay, our designer, our lead designer at RTR, and and uh, does all of our fun average stuff as well. Uh, he worked with Ford Design Studio. And so we designed and developed the bodies and produced them for all three Bronco race trucks. Mine, of course, my teammate Lauren and Jason Shearer, who was uh, Ford's choices to uh, run the Bronco banner, which is a huge honor. You know, Bronco's coming back. Uh, it's no secret now, but you know, it's, you know, since the nineties, there hasn't been one. And obviously Bronco has a huge uh, racing heritage and it's just an honor to, to be able to be a part of that. Um, and so, you know, we've got, we've just put the fresh body on it. Um, it looks, in my opinion, unbelievable. Today's the first time I've seen it in person because I've been kind of at home while the, the Fun Aver team has been working on it in New Mexico at our shop. Um, and I've been at our shop in Charlotte, you know, doing the, the business and the things that I do in the, in the, in the team. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it looks amazing. I'm so pumped on it. Um, I'll, I'll let you in on a little secret. Um, we will be debuting all new trucks later this year. Uh, we've been cranking, trying to get them done in time for hammers. We just couldn't. We always had the plan that, you know, we were happy to run our tried and true and proven vehicles. And if we couldn't get our durability testing done, uh, that we're not just gonna show up to hammers, the, arguably the hardest off-road race in the world and just, you know, not know what we got. So, um, so yeah, I got old faithful Brocky. I love this truck. It is so fun to drive. Um, and yeah, the biggest news this year is, uh, you know, we got all the reliable drivetrain, everything we've had, and then our new look. So uh, really, really pumped. Well, so the, the thing is, okay, a couple of things from this guy. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, dri oh, drifty boy, Lauren Healy. <laughs> um, okay, so I've had a chance to photograph this truck over the last two days. And um, when I look at it, the side profile is really where it screams uh, Bronco. It, yeah. I think it looks great. I mean, it's such a big departure from a normal 4400 truck. Yeah. Um, because you usually just see that huge tire just sticking out on the rear. And yeah. that's kind of the profile. Um, I like that you teased the this design on your facebook i think yeah uh, and it's like this little like bar i don't know like this sensor bar like sticking out the back it's uh, like yeah. what, what what the what's going on here well, but so, it, it looks yeah, funny so, yeah yeah so that's actually the tire and that's a profile of the, actually the new truck oh okay so okay. the new truck has a little more a little bit more of it of it hanging out um but so that's what that profile was. It made it look like a sensor bar, but that's funny you you perceived it like that. Yeah, you know, we wanted, I mean, look, it's always important, you know, look, this truck is not a production Bronco. It does share, you know, geometry with it, right? Independent front suspension, the trailing arms in the rear, um, you know, obviously four wheel drive, but this is a, you know, the extreme of the extreme. And it was very important for us to look, for it to look like a Bronco, not only for Ford, but for us, cause you know, there's a lot of Bronco fans in the world and a lot of new owners and we want them to be proud of, you know, and have something to cheer for. And that's relevant to to their truck if it's even if it's just aesthetics. And so it was a huge focus. Um, you know, Lindsay did an amazing job working with Ford Studio to get it here. You know, this is not easy. I mean, the amount of function and um, form that you have to balance in this game is is nuts. And that's why you don't see any full body race trucks in Ultra 4. And we wanted to change that this year. and make it a little bit more relevant. And um, I think we've done a, a phenomenal job. I, I'm just so pumped in seeing it and yeah. delivery and like how this sits in this setting with these color pops and stuff. Like I gotta imagine it looks great in your in your camera. Well, um, uh, and you know, essentially it is like the NASCAR version of off-road, right? In that, it, yeah, obviously it's not a Bronco underneath, but the point is that you need to have some relatability. And I think maybe that's, could be a little bit of a disconnect from the rest of the 4400 field yep. versus this. Like you can't say, you know, there's a, a, a like a, a Jeep or like a Toyota right. body yep. um, truck that looks like that. But 
Yep. With that said, I'm glad it's yeah, getting and, to this but point. Also, you know, the thing is, like, Ford still learns a lot, like, in NASCAR and in sports like this. Like, they learn a lot of things to go back to production. So we're always capturing a lot of data for them. You know, um, loads, G-forces, obviously engine, motor data, transmission data, um, things that they leverage. And they do learn a lot through this, like their Baja efforts with the Bronco R. And, you know, we're building 4,600 trucks as well out of production Broncos. So, you know, even though it's not an actual Bronco, um, there's still a lot of learnings that end up going back into, into production. And on top of that, where are the Broncos going to live? They're going to live out here, essentially, yep. you know, and yep. they will thrive here. And on top of that, um, I, I heard you were saying that a lot of the development was done out here at Johnson yeah. Valley. Yeah, we, Lauren and I came out a few months ago and we went, we're out with the engineers and doing like final durability and, and um, just, uh, just actually experiencing their durability loops and what they did. And there's multiple courses all through Johnson Valley that they used and, you know, they, they did their homework and, and that's why the new Bronco is so good. They, they spent the time and spent the effort. They're not just you know, riding on the name, you know, at, just like Mustang, you know, Ford takes their brand serious and they really have done the effort to give us something that we all can be proud of. And so that's, a, that's another reason why it's so cool to just be a part of it. Can we take a look at the engine bay? Cause this yep. actually has a Ford power plant. Yep. Yeah, this is uh so this motor started out as a uh, Ford performance crate motor. Um, and uh, I've been pretty uh, underpowered uh, compared to almost all my competitors uh, because this truck came from 4600 so and the chassis was built for the motor so you, can, you can't fit a bigger motor in it so um after you know i had a, it was a, it's called a z427 it's a four performance crate motor it made 600 horsepower and so i sent it to uh mike cash uh who um used to work for roush yates and he's just been around engines and loves off-road and just a really good dude all the way around and uh, he hooked it up and got it to about seven something ish 720 something like that and then um we put nitrous on it really yeah but it only runs nitrous when my co-driver is not in because it takes up his seat so like for qualifying we'll transition and put nitrous in it because i'm about 100 150 horsepower down the top guys you know, on the on the on the big motor guys so um, we've been able to keep up pretty well in like in the races, but it's the short things that we short courses where we really get run on. So, um, but this motor has been phenomenal. Uh, you know, like I said, it's a crate motor. They've done a little bit of look at that. There's a rock in there. <laughs> you probably picked it that's up. Probably from that Moab. Yeah. <laughs> Holy, I didn't, that's crazy. I love that it's just sitting in there yeah. and there's like no way to get it out. It's yeah. like a puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, this, uh, this runs a uh, Holly EFI. Um, obviously we got an AccuSump, you know, just very simple, you know, 427. Um, it's got Holly EFI. We uh, got this little gadget to, um, we were losing power when we, when we were using the old individual, the old throttle body we had. So this actually helped us create quite a lot of power. And then that goes to a, KNN, which is a basic KNN filter, like the cone filter, and then we wrap it with a foam pre-filter because the dust and stuff out here is just, it's super gnarly. Um, and so that that helps and then it, it flows what we need for the power. I mean, because really the thing is, it, it's such a feat just to finish at all. Oh yeah. You know, under the allotted time. And I think you've had a, a top 10 finish, right? Yeah, with seventh this. was my best. Right, and, yeah. and seven out of, whatever over a hundred drivers yeah um and on top of that behind you it's not that many more people finishing you know yeah. it's in the teens yeah. sometimes uh because you have to finish under a, a certain amount of time and when they cut that off everyone's dnf hey, if you're you not could, there yeah you could be only one of 15 finishers out of a hundred and or so uh, people which is insane and so a lot of people are, are probably wondering like oh well that's it in terms of power well the problem is you have to last yeah and, and yeah, potentially you could uh, fit a bigger motor or put whatever turbos or whatever, but good luck lasting the entire race. Yeah, this race is not a horsepower race. Qualifying is a horsepower, but the race is not because you're not out there burning it down. You're out there in this race particularly, just getting it done. So this is plenty to win King of the Hammers. Um, it's reliable, it is absolute tank. We've got a great proven system here. So it's, it's definitely a great truck to be racing at Hammers. Uh, not bringing the new trucks out. 
um, but we're really excited to, to show those off. They're gonna be game changers and um, you know everything that Lauren's learned in his 15 years, some of my perspective and new things that that um, you know I, I bring from the, my other experience and then the, the guys that we worked with uh, Triton Engineering, Igor, you know, his brain. So it's it's been a really cool process. I can't wait for you guys to see him. But Brocky's not going anywhere. I'm not selling it. This thing's got too much history. And um, you can even still buy it at Walmart. Oh, yeah, that's right. That? So, this is a remote control car. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, the original the original body, yeah. But uh, the new body will be uh, will be coming out in the near future with New Bright as well. So it's exciting. That'll be cool. So um, <laughs> the crazy thing for me, uh, because I followed this race, um, extensively, you know, since I started shooting it, it, it's just like a minor, minor lapse of concentration and you're pretty much out. Oh my like gosh. there's just so many things that can go wrong. You can break a, a, a drive shaft, axle, you get a puncture even. Yeah, an inch wrong in the rocks. I mean, the, the, uh, the risk and reward game the whole time during this race is what you're, is just what you're playing. How much faster do I push? How much harder do I go through the desert? You know, last year, I burnt my diff, my rear diff out on the desert lap, you know, and, and, you know, was it because I left with cold oil? Was it because I was loading it too hard for that long? Um, you know, those things that you just really don't know and you just, you know, you evaluate it and figure out the failure point and, and try to make adjustments. But, you know, it's just that constant thing, you know, you, the rocks, how fast do I go through the rocks? I can make up a lot of time in them, but I might break something. If I, all that time, you know, the minute I make up, well, if I break up, anything or puncture a tire or anything, you know, we lose it all. So it's a constant focus, you know, it's six, seven hours of just intense focus, hitting all your marks. And uh, that's why I love it. It's such a fun challenge. You know, drifting is, is a different, it's so intense for such a short time, but this, you know, you kind of get in the groove, you get in the flow and you've got hours and you, you're pre-running and it's just like such a, a fun, different experience from a driver, a driver level. Um, it's interesting because this is a finish line race yeah. versus drifting, oh, yeah. right? Uh, with drifting, there's just so many other nuances that you have to pay attention to or you have to be good at. But like you said, it's such a short amount of time. And this, you actually are working along with your co-driver, yeah. you know, for that one goal, which, um, by the way, one of my favorite stories that Eric, your co-driver, told me last year is that you were going through a certain obstacle and like a boulder, like one of those, fell and i think it hit the truck or oh it or ended almost... up on the roof it wasn't that big but it was a big piece of it and it slammed the roof and just caved it in it was cr it was crazy because like if that hit him or or came in the window like it's nuts and you don't think about that but yo know, these boulders i mean they fall what you're driving in is falling boulders it's like what's to say that's not going to happen when you're coming through you know yeah, it's, it's sketchy all around. And on top of that, if somebody gets stuck, you essentially have to drive over them like you're, they're part of the obstacle, right? Yeah, if they're, if they're plugging it up and they're done, yeah. I mean, in fact, last year I had to run someone over and someone ran me over like I was stuck. I actually had broken axle and the guy came up and he just coming down the side of my truck and I just hear my fiberglass just going pow, 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 and here he comes just over my fender and you're just like sitting there taking it, you know, it sucks. But uh, it's part of the game, man. And, um, you know, people are out there committed to get to where they're going. And if you're the trail plug, you're uh, you're definitely getting something's happening. Well, honestly, that's one of the most fun things for me as a, a photographer. You know, when I'm chasing the race, when we're following you, we're essentially running our own race to go to where you're going to go next. Yeah. Right. And we have to take shortcuts and whatever. But the fun thing is I can get a shot of you across the dry lake bed at over 100 miles per hour. Right. And then the next time I see you, potentially you could be going one mile an hour and I could just walk along you. Like, yeah. Like I'm strolling yeah. next to you. And uh, I don't know if you remember this last year, I got one of my favorite clips, you know, from our uh, autofocus series is of me just kind of like casually walking in front of you as you're coming up. I think it was claw and I just like gave you like a fist pump. Yeah. Like er, oh, here I remember. he is. You know? I, and it's so fun to see you guys on the trails too. Yeah. I mean, because you just finish obstacle and then once you're done with that, the ne very next one you go to potentially we're there already, yep. you know, and we have to hike in and all that. Yeah. You guys have a serious, like your own race to get us and you got to plan it right and know where we're at. And I guess you're using the tracker sometimes. Yeah. And sometimes the tracker just hangs up and then we have 
certain people at certain places to give us like, oh, Juan just last left, like, uh, you know, we got sh uh, shots of him going through and then we kind of have an estimate of when you'll be at the next spot yeah. because of the other races that we're shooting, yeah. you know, so we kind of get a, a cadence going or whatever yeah. but it, it's fun for us and i'm sure i mean you guys are having a lot of fun we're having just as much fun we're, we're having a lot of fun last year was interesting at the end it got kind of sketchy at spooners like we were there in the dark truck was broken we only had three-wheel drive to get up through spooners eric ended up my co-driver ended up getting pretty exhausted so i put him in the driver's seat and i was spotting him up and it was the sun was down it was cold like it gets gnarly at night if you're there. I mean, it's a day race. You shouldn't be there at night, but we made, we, you know, we had some bad luck, but um, it can get bad. You know, it's that, that, speaking of spooners, it's called spooners because of guys that uh, broke down and they had to spoon all night so they didn't freeze. <laughs> what? Yeah. No way. That's what I've been told. That's, a, that's how spooners got its name. So then uh, how did Backdoor get a name then? Well, I think that's, that's some, uh, somebody that, um, you know, when you conquer the trail, you get the right to you know, to name it. And so that was just probably somebody's funny name. <laughs> Let you imagine why it's called that. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So if we could just do a quick overview. Sure. So Brocky, obviously our uh, King shocks um, and bypasses. Um, so these things, the abuse they take and how well they keep the chassis set through all this insanity is just wild. You have King shocks pretty much on all your off-road vehicles. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We've been working with them for, for a long time um nitto trail grapplers so these are 40s um which size out here makes such a huge difference in fact nitto's coming out with even having a 42 at some point soon but uh, and then we have our wheels so these are um our hammer wheel with that we've done with center line so this is a fun ever wheel um the bead locks are uh available in a special order only but we have a production version of this wheel that you can buy that are non bead lock for the street so it's kind of a fun ever signature edition wheel um Obviously we got the optimum, two optimal batteries under here. So we have a switch, we run off of one, but if we have an issue, we jump over to the other. And then if we need to, if we kill one, we can put it on two and the alternator will charge both um, while, we're, while we're running if we have an issue. Um, I like the built-in redundancy with stuff like that. Yeah, you need it. Yeah. Um, we have two fuel pumps. So we have two, uh, we have a fuel safe fuel cell in here that's built and shaped perfectly in the chassis. And in there we have uh, air motive brushless two pumps so one's always running we have an issue i have a switch in there uh, we also have a uh switch for to override the fans as well if there's any issue in inside like they come on automatically um i mean because this is an endurance race there's just so many things um everybody you know when they finish and when they're on the uh stage it's like oh we had such a tough race yeah um everything went wrong well, it's not just that team, you know, every yep. single team has oh, yeah. pretty much went through that. Yeah. Uh, so transmissions, Turbo 400, uh, we run an Atlas, a racing Atlas in here uh, for our high and low. Um, Turbo 400, Gearworks does all our transmission. It's got a billet torque converter, which is another way I was able to get a little bit more power, trying to keep up with the, the big power guys. Uh, massive Warren winch. Uh, there's their 9.5 XPS, which is a very, very strong winch that's gotten us out of situations. The goal is to never winch, but sometimes you do. Um, I mean, because like you said, if you push hard and get over an obstacle, you know, if you just hurt the truck or you break something, yeah. it would have been just way more beneficial to spend the extra five minutes. Right, exactly, to winch. exactly. Yeah, and that's the thing, like, you wanna shoot it, but if you get hung up or roll, it's, it's always, a, that's that risk versus reward. Um, Project X, so we have a, a new lighting partner, or actually my first lighting partner ever in, in off-road, Project X. Um, they're a new company. Uh, they're not new to the U.S., but they're new to, uh, to lighting, and they're doing some really game-changing uh, lighting technologies, which uh, we're really excited to work with them. And they're taking a lot of my feedback and Lauren's feedback on how to really create a really cool product. So uh, they'll be coming out soon. Um, and other than that, I mean, you can just see everything is just so beefy, like these giant axles, right? 300 M it's just all proper stuff to take the abuse that's out here and uh, hopefully get back in one piece. Hmm. Well, good luck. I know oh, you have a lot sorry, of, sorry, Larry, oh, one yeah. more thing. Yeah. I do want to show these. So, yeah. um, our seats. So we've been working on the car row. So when I first got into off road, um, I realized how, I don't know what's going on here. The seating technology um 
was just a lot of it was unsafe and i realized a lot of the seeding companies are not doing proper engineering for the real stuff that we're doing out here and um i had a um so we've been developing this seat and it's out now so this is a recaro a pro racer orv and um we one race that i was doing actually i was in the prototype this was two years ago i was in the prototype seat and um my co-driver at the time glenn uh sorry this is three three hammers ago um and uh, he was in a, another production seat of a well-known group and we hit a big g out went head over and uh, he broke his back and i was totally fine in the same hit it was a squared hit and uh, this seat and the foam technology that we've developed with recaro uh, is just a, a game changer it's very high absorbing of energy and uh, it's what you need out here a lot of guys are running suspension seats and really cushy seats and what happens when you hit those loads in a suspension seat the seat compresses and then drives all that energy back up your spine and when you have those cushy comfy cushions in there when you hit a g out you just blow through the cushion and as you're blowing through the cushion you're increasing acceleration and that's how people are breaking their backs with the hard shells and so we've changed that and got something new and this is something i'm really really proud of just to bring to the off-road world because it's it's been well overdue um so this is uh a very important piece to to safety that we that we run with well i mean this sport in general is still pretty new and i'm sure um now going forward there's just going to be so many new technologies coming out yep. uh to, to cater to this sport i mean like whose thought was it to drive over boulders or or, or just right. like nobody in their right mind was like oh this looks like a good road let's drive up this right, thing right you know? no no one did and this i don't know if you've seen this before do you know what this is oh this is a fire extinguisher right this is a fire extinguisher yeah not many people have seen these you just literally take this off and well, i'm not gonna do it now but you take it hit it and then it just it's it's as good as i think two fire extinguishers yeah which is crazy yeah so it's things like that speaking right? of technology right yeah speaking of technology and then i'm sure even going forward there's just going to be so many other things yeah. um potentially yeah this i mean it, it's funny coming from drift and obviously you know i have an incredible team with a lot of really smart people and a lot of the technology and things people are doing here is is has not been refined in a long time and that's one of the things i love about it there's a lot of opportunity for data for adjustable dampers like just a lot of really cool stuff that can be done out here so um, we're, we're evolving and and pushing the limits as we do whenever we get involved in things and uh it's a lot of fun so yeah like for example even independent front suspension it was relatively new i feel like in ra uh, rock crawling racing too and it's been getting developed on you know over the years yeah 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 and then and, and you know a lot of people were like oh, it'll never work but now i mean you know i mean last year a straight axle truck won hammers but the there i mean the independent trucks are just murder and and they're just about as good in the rocks i mean there's a little bit of compromise in the rocks depending upon what the obstacle is but you can get through it and in the desert it's just not even a not even a comparison of what what you're able to achieve out there all right well good luck i know you need to go pre-running yes um, we do but uh this is going to be a fun race and we cannot wait to chase you the entire week. I can't wait to see your smiling face out there, Larry. Yeah. Oh, I'll be fist pumping all right. All right. When I see you, I'm going to be fist pumping Sweet in the bro. rocks while you're going 10 tenths, but still one mile an hour. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wrap. Thank you guys. Thanks Vaughn, as always. Always brother. Yeah.